association rule algorithms. At the end of this session, you as a student will be able to demonstrate the basic association rule algorithms. The a priori algorithm is the most popular basic association rule algorithms and many researchers have used this particular algorithms to do their particular research, modify them and generate the best rules from the data set to represent the particular data set and give these as a summarization of the particular data set. A priori is used in most commercial products. It uses the property any subset of a large item set must also be large. All large item sets are downward closed that is it satisfies a minimum support requirement. So do its subsets because the subsets are also large enough. Lattices are used to illustrate this particular property of formation from nothing to having something added to it, adding something higher than it and forming a lattice. So lines in the lattices represent the subset relationship. We use a downward closure of going from an empty set phi to adding on single item sets or one item sets A, B, C and D. <coughs> that the combination of item sets A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, C, D, then three item sets and four item sets and so on. So the lattice keeps on growing from top to down having a downward closure. On the right side we see here all the subsets of the closures A, C, D and we see a combination of how these things are happening with the help of the bold line representation of A, C, D being developed. The basic idea is to generate the candidate item sets of a particular size and then scan the database to count these to see if they are large. During the scan i, the candidates of size i, ci are counted. Only candidates that are large are allowed to be used to generate the candidates for the next pass because even the previous candidates should have the property of being large. Li is used to generate this candidate of the next, that is the candidate Ci plus 1. An item set is considered as a candidate only if all its subsets are also large. So being large is very important and to generate candidates of the size next to i, that is i plus 1, Joins are made of large item sets which are found in the previous passes. So the a priori generator algorithm goes by taking an input as a large item set of the size and outputting it for the candidates of a particular size. Then the a priori generator algorithm is to generate this particular rules. Okay for all the item sets which are taken into consideration and making a union of previously developed candidates to form the next candidate. This algorithm is generated to generate a superset of the large item set of the size i. So ci is superset of li when the input li minus 1 is given. Pruning could be added to prune candidates that have subsets of the size i minus 1 that are not large. So we go for the inputs as item sets, the database of transactions and a support and the output which is to be generated is a large item set. We take the initial candidates and we keep on adding them okay, to the set li and li will be then used to generate the candidate ci okay so based upon that the a priori generator will be used will be keeping on adding 
to finally generate the candidate at the next level. A priori assumes that the database in memory is always resident and the maximum number of database scans is one more than the cardinality of the largest large item set. And this is potentially a large number of database scans is the weakness of the a priori approach because to find an accurate number of rules we have to go for a large number of scans. This is of course overcome by the research that has been done later to the establishment of a priori. Now let us think for a while what are the drawbacks of a priori algorithm and how can we overcome them. Keep in mind that the database is the same and the items should be large and the support should be also large subsets of item sets because every set that we are considering is going to be a large set. To overcome the drawback of a priori, we use an algorithm called a sampling algorithm that facilitates counting of item sets with a large database. It reduces the number of database scans to one in best case and two in the worst case. So we are reducing scans. Sample is drawn such that the, it is always memory resident. It is health use to find large item sets for the sample and these are potentially large item sets and a candidate to be counted using the entire database. Additionally candidates are determined by applying the negative border function that is the minimal set of items not considered potentially large but whose subsets are potentially large and hence they are important items to be considered. The negative border algorithm is illustrated here and here we also consider those items which were previously not considered okay, in this negative border algorithm. The algorithm goes by working as good as your previous sampling algorithm but here the missing large item sets are then added on because its subsets are large enough and have potential items which are based in it. We have a buffer zone between those known to be large and the others. We represent smallest possible set of items that could be potentially very large and we reduce the support when finding large item sets in the sample which is more for a true large item set from the complete database which will be discovered. Partitioning is a good approach to generate large item sets based on the partitioning of the set of transactions where we divide the whole data set D into P partitions and partitioning improves the performance of finding large item sets in various ways. We use large item set property that means all the item sets should be very large so that we do not have any sort of results which we can directly come to a particular conclusion to. And at least one partition design efficient algorithm not scanning the entire database. So partitioning algorithm adapt to the limited main memory. Parallel and distributed algorithms could be used and handled by different machines and we may go for an incremental generation of the association rules which proves to be easier. Therefore we divide our item set into partitions D1, D2 up to DP. Then we go for the output which is large item sets. We go for doing the algorithm in every partition, finding out the rules and then finally merging all these particular rules to get our finally final set of rules which are the candidate rules which represent our particular data set. An example of partitioning is as we are seeing here the whole data set is divided into D1 and D2 and we are having the sets L1 and L2 of the items which are present in D1 and D2 on the right hand side. The basic partitioning algorithm reduces the 
number of database scans to two and the partitions can be placed in the main memory. The counts of the items in the partitions now are possible and easy enough to analyze and after all the partitions are scanned, entire database is covered and the item count is found. For our references, we have used Thank you.